refugees. This one is refugees. Take only what you can carry. Is what each Nisei remembers to this day. Is that the citizens of this country who were Japanese ancestry were put into camp, um, American style. This is refugees. Their frail housewares, bed slats, pillows, chairs piled against the pole in the space between the sidewalk and the street. Can you hear me in the very back? Mm -hmm. Good. It was usable rubbish day. The city, the city's men were trucking to the recycle yard. Someone had set it there as they could not. They lived in that Section 8 apartment around the corner. I had only been gone a week. Who had peeped to La Migra? No more would I hear her shout, Cayete, from the second story window. No more musical language from kids perennially at play in the stone yard beyond my back fence. No more balls to throw down from the garage or toys she trooped with them around the block to retrieve. They were in a holding facility. The next door neighbor said, before they send them back. Back where? Those kids were born here. I saw her bring the last one home from County Hospital. The neighbor mumbled something about a new law and turned away. He would not look at me. Garage sale. My junk is your jewel, your trash, my treasure. They come scattered like birds picking a tree as early as a listed hour and the seller will allow their eyes grab, their hands reek to what their eyes have set aside. I saw that one first. They are both pulling. This isn't a white sailor rat. <laughs> they come from need. Student, immigrant, the entrepreneurial poor, up and coming by the numbers, from boredom, from habit, the urge for more, for less. Some come driven by a deeper need, hunger for some what they cannot name. But we don't need any of this stuff. Who's talking about need? <laughs> they know they may not want it when they get it home. <laughs> yes, they let the bitter of some seller's glut magnetize their spirit for an instant dispel their gloom. <laughs> All must come along. You have to push aside moccasins under 
water, thin them off, duck, dodge, ease your way along to surface and to brightness. From those depths, you don't think to bring what you've stored there. Pain, fear, the will to lose. Leave all that below. You know, you know, standing in that great height, you cannot desert your other selves. They must come to stooling themselves to thirst you, lock washer tight against eddying down. destination only to their friends. To others, they were on the road to somewhere from somewhere else. They had saved and bought, grounded themselves in the section of town few wanted then, like that Navajo Hopi land over the coal and uranium. They lived in horrors act hardly seen by us who groused that slow signs arrested our flight toward the new bridge. Faded off white, some in need of paint, paid for as earnings from Second World War scorched metal dollars from hot holes of ships. Yes, they were not a destination. Ella Grandison was lured there while her Isaac helped build a Burma road. More money than for Negroes in Texas. This modest home was their state in the world. Children raised on potatoes, butter beans, collard greens, not warm enough for okra. Were the Grandisons and their neighbors be able to afford a house with land for the money the white state would force them to accept? Will the new place be a destination. Something of me 
my mark. Sitting on a lava block, this rock, 
a reminder that other times meant other things. While farmers in Europe plowed their land that was not theirs to waste with ruin, Lassen erupted, and for seven years the mountain shook, the world shook. Europe stayed revolution by starting a war. What revolution had Earth planned? The mountains just needed to break out. Magna jetted through vents skyward, plague of flowing stone and fire, incinerated cedar and redwood, tephracorn volcanoes, flaming rocks and mushroom clouds, house-sized boulders tossed on devil's post bile, reshaping land, raising their leveling air. Tehama, an asset factory burbling under our feet. Surfer and nitrate explosions. Smell as gray scent, rotten eggs. Embedded in lava pockets, squirrel scat, staghorn bacon, seeds and dust. A rain and something new will grow. sing the blues. You think the blues are bad, that they bring on sadness. How could you be so wrong? You tell me not to sing the blues, I'll say you're mad. And don't know blues. I sing the blues so they won't stay around today. I sing the blues to drive the blues away. <laughs> Keep sending love out. Keep sending love out where the heart clutches and the soul sings, keep sending love out into the lighted dark, over the fog-swept sea, or where it runs the risk of dying, dusty death. Send it where there may not be an echo, no return. Send love, that magic portent that drug of madness, the poet's bane, some fool's delight. Send it where it has never been, a new address. Keep sending, sending, sending. here to take the wall down because we can't fit this many people in. <laughs> so we're going to have, so we have more people uh, hear the discussion, um, and I'm probably going to have to ask people to move a little bit so that I can take the wall down. Uh, <laughs> I saw you swimming at La Puerta. I went 
Did you go to the I saw you swimming down there. Oh, right. We swam in the pool together. I don't know if you remember, but I remember you. Did you take my class there? No. Okay. I'm Lori. Everyone yeah. knows. I remember a meeting you more. What kind of chairs? Uh, feel free to help yourself. Uh, they're stacked over here by the uh, wall closet. Um, we'll get started now with a little bit of uh, discussion, interview, and uh, everybody okay? Got their chairs, got their places. Later on, we'll still have time for that. Okay. Can you hear me, everybody? Yes. Uh, see, poetry is song. It can be narrative, narrative, lyrical, dramatic. You can express what you're thinking and feeling, and then share it with the world. There are some things that you can't express any other way than in a poem. Certain feelings about love, about living. Reading poetry is satisfying and stimulating to the imagination. It helps bring you out of your own problems into other realities. Poems are songs, and like songs, poems can soothe. I listened to poems from an early age. My mother recited long narrative poems that I still remember some of today. People often sat around reciting poems as part of community and entertainment. I like the sound of poems, rhythm and rhyme. Sweet hymns run softly as I sing my song. Philip Sidney's to his lady, loving in truth and fame and verse my love to show that she dares she to take some pleasure of my pain. Pleasure might make her read. Reading might make her book. Reading might make her know. Knowledge might pity win and pity grace obtain. I sought fit words to paint the blackest face of woe 
studying inventions fine, her wits to entertain, off turning others' beams to see events and flow, some soft and fruitful showers upon my sunburned brain. But words came halting forth, wanting inventions stay. Invention, nature's child, that step dame studies blows, and other feet still see, but strangers in my way. Thus, great with child to speak, helpless in my throes, biting my truant pen, beating myself with spite. Fool, said my muse to me, look in thy heart. I was in my teens when I first started writing poetry. I wrote something every day so that I developed a fairly large body of work. I was expressing emotions and experimenting with language. There was a, 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 a sort of sidebar here. Um, I, well, I, I was had some a few quatrains, and this young professor. The, one of the colleges came along and I showed them to him and he looked at them and he snorted. Hm. You, you, you shine shoes damn good. <laughs> and he uh, looked away the, the, the portraits that I had done. I, I don't remember his name and I don't think that anybody else remembers his name. <laughs> The best way to learn about poems is to read them yourself and read them to yourself. Go to readings and listen, get books at the library, put in the time, read out loud, take a class, but be sure to write as well as read, and learn to recite. When people try to write poetry, they realize how difficult it is to write and they develop more appreciation for it. A full list of them, my favorite poets, is impossible. You should see how large our section is at home. At first I started reading European writers, mostly men. I used to saturate myself with a certain group, say like Irish poets or Norwegian poets. When I had access to African American poets, I read those. I was interested in hearing voices of poets who wrote well. When African American poets and other poets of color were having a hard time getting published. In the early 70s, I edited and published an anthology called Isis or Black Bones. The poets I love are too long to miss, but I'll name a few. There's Shakespeare, Sir Philip Sidney, James Weldon Johnson, Emily Dickinson, T.S. Eliot, Rita Dove, Audrey Love, Lucille Clifton, Al Young, <laughs> Naomi Magic, Julia Benabrad, to name a few. Poets that I've read recently that, that excite me. Again, this is too long, but there are a few. It's Bruce Bagnell, Lucy Langday, Peter Buttrose Jr., Judy Wells, Leo Jensen, Jamie Fester, Jimmy Lamb, Meg Withers. Oh, 
over the years, I found community by attending classes, going to poetry readings, and having open mics in my backyard. Now, I attend Poetry Express, at the Malayan flavors on Monday nights, and occasionally a book release party and reading at Expressions Gallery. I am not participating in open mics any longer, but I used to do it frequently. Thank you. So uh, I would like to open it up to the audience. So we'd be happy to. I'll, I'll try to repeat. Uh, perhaps Elise will help me with try to repeat <coughs> any questions that you have or comments. Uh, is anyone? Are people here really familiar with uh, A.D. Miller's poetry? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have thoughts on uh, on your readings? Anyone? Uh, we have questions. I just finished reading your uh, first Ticket to Exile, and I'm glad to see that you have here the uh, second volume, so I'm hoping to be able to read that as well. Um, I enjoyed the anecdote about the professor that you offered your poems to as a young man uh, and the uh, response he gave you which was unwelcoming. Um, <laughs> as a teacher yourself um, with fresh young poets what have been some of your ways of expressing your opinions of their work? Well, what I, of course, I've always written about uh, young poets, and if, um, I, I put when I had a radio program, I put them on the air, and uh, um, I. Um, Try to publicize their work so that people could know that what's happening, the newest work that's being done by younger poets. And you want to see youth uh, to let them know that they're being appreciated and that they should keep working because that will help to feed them and then they will do better and will help other people to do better. This you make the community stronger and richer. And and more Another question? Um, yes. Uh, I write fiction. And, and who are you? I am Jane. Uh, I'm Brewster. Uh, I see, a dear friend. <laughs> <laughs> and I have had the pleasure and the honor of being in a writing group for a time with A.D. And I, remember, I always remember a comment uh, about someone's work. I don't remember whose anymore. But the comment was, this work has been felt through. And I very much took that to heart. And when I evaluate my own writing, that's what I ask myself. Have I felt this? through, not thought this through, but felt this through, and I'm just wondering if you could say more about the difference between feeling work through and thinking work through. Aye, 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 aye. aye, aye. <laughs> I get a really difficult question. I thought it through my better half. Hannah's saying much better than I do. Really? Well, I can start out with something and he could maybe add in. But, I mean, sometimes when I, I've done a lot of editing of his poetry or putting together some of the books, like, 
which poem comes first, which poem comes next. It's a very intuitive process. So I've been involved in his, in his process. And so there would be times when he would, he would have this poem and he wouldn't quite know what it's meant. You know, and he'd be like, intellectually, not, not too sure, but there was this feeling that it was just right the way it was. And, and even though you couldn't literally say what these words together meant, you could get a feel. And he would want to keep that because it was something mysterious and it was something um, beyond knowing, beyond the knowing of the mind. And I think he just, he, he just intuitively wanted to keep that. And so a lot of his work is, has that in it. Yeah, it does. It's true. <laughs> is that is that a difference in your approach between poetry and prose? The feeling versus the communication. Oh, poetry and prose. Oh, there's yeah, there's quite a difference. I mean, um, there's some things you could only say um, in poems that you can't say in prose. That, that there is, yes. Can you say any more about that? Um, the difference between poetry and prose. Well, um, I mean, because prose is usually, usually a direct statement, and you appeal primarily to the intellect when you're making poetry, but poetry, um, as well as the intellect. So there's a much more profound kind of expression needed and a much more um, profound response given to it. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody? Responses to the reading that he gave? I had the first time here of your work um, here with a, a friend of mine and a good friend of Timbus, your daughter, and um, yeah, unfortunately, with the wall down, we need to speak a little louder. Well, I'm not familiar with your work, and yet, at least seven times, I felt your work. I felt that feeling of no other way to say it. I have felt this, and I feel it from your point of view. I feel when you're saying, writing, and feeling yourself. I don't know really any other way to put it, except it's just an uh, experience that is rare, it's juicy, it's special, and I got it today. You know, the short version is a game of goosebumps, but... Uh, goosebumps. <laughs> I think someone's already said that before. Uh, that's the sort of response that um, makes the reader very happy. <laughs> well, I'm very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else? Sending love out. Um, I think that um, because I'm a, I am, my name is Vivian, I'm, I am a friend of AD's and E's. Um, and that poem kind of has been kind of going round and round uh, for a long time. And it, and I think because it's about love, and, and you did say it's difficult to write about love, uh, being in love, and, and yet that poem says so much about it because it it just doesn't just stop with the relationship love it's kind of goes all over and it invites you so I just I guess I'm going to say was that your intention to perhaps invite people to experiment with that ability to send it out I don't know I'm just putting a question together that I don't know <laughs> 
just asking if it was your intent to get people to kind of experiment with how to send love out, different ways to send love out. Yes, there are many ways. Um, let's see, this is the, the 50, what is it, something like 55 um, words for love in an Eskimo language. More than that, I guess. For snow. For snow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing is. <laughs> they love snow. Yes, so we need Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's many ways to express love. Yeah. 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 That's so many. Yes, lots of ways. Do you have another question here? Uh, me? Yes. Yeah, great. Hi. Uh, hi. So, um, I, I mean, that poem has become a classic. And I've seen people quote, like, um, Raymond Nat Turner has a poem where he quotes, Keep Sending Love, as part of his poem. Um, so, it, I, I mean, I just wanted to congratulate you on writing a classic. Oh, I, that's true. She wants to congratulate you on writing a classic poem. Oh. <laughs> As I said that, Raymond Nat Turner has written a poem where he quotes that line in your poem, uh, from your poem in his poem. And he's like now the poet of the black agenda. That's so, high praise. It is high yes. praise. I wanted to tell you that. Yeah, yeah and he credits it. Little question over here by the um, window. I guess I wanted to say um, when I was in Berlin, um, three years ago maybe, I was reading Fall Rising on the subway. And I was also reading about the awful history of Berlin, and I felt like I felt so fortunate to be reading your book so I could also see the parallel that was going on in our country and the really uh, deep, dark parts of what happened in our country. And I felt like everybody should read Fall Rising to, to really understand the depths of the, the despair and, and the, the the darkness and the, the stuff and then in your own amazing resiliency and how your poems have so much come out of this experience, these experiences that you you refuse to not be resilient you know, and to, to, to grow and bloom. Um, so I just appreciate all of your work and your, your autobiography and your poems together really are um, so important, I think, for people understanding more of our culture. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, I'm Dada number three, and um, what I love about Keep Sending Love Out is that I use it all the time. People are always talking about everything that's wrong or bad mm -hmm. in the world. And then I go, well, you're right, except that my 96-year-old dad keeps saying, keep sending love out. And then everything changes. They go, oh, <laughs> yeah, what a great idea. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and that's what I love about it. It just warms my heart. And I'm just, because that's, that's the answer. You just keep sending yeah. it out. You keep telling everybody else. You know, this is this is it. This is what it's all about. So that's what I and that's I guess what makes it a classic or just makes it wonderful. So it's not simply to love, but to persist in love. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah, I just I love that poem. I love the ones I you made me laugh. I just like cry, you know, everything. Your poems evoke so much emotion. But in the Keep Sending Out Love, I was feeling, you know, relative to what's happening in our country, how important that is. And right before I came here, I was at the post office sending out some kids' books about mindfulness to West Virginia where opiates are happening. And I see here, send it where it has never been, a new address. 
And it's like, yes, I knew to do this because Amy says we need to understand why I keep going to the post office. And you know, we all need, there's so much need for love. There is so much need for love and there's so much, you know, hate that maybe I'm not going to send the email that I was going to send to my sister-in-law. <laughs> Because of, and, and maybe I am, because maybe it's, you know, you have your nieces and nephews on the wall, how can you not believe there's climate change? Like, love them, you know, and it's, so we have to find a common language, because it ain't working, but your stuff is so awesome, and thank you. Another question from the middle here? Um, I, I also want to thank you very much for being an incredible example of just persisting and you know for all of us that are moving up in years that it's possible to, to be here with dignity and with intelligence and um, I want to I want to thank you personally for that. Thank you. Chris, uh, in my uh, personal note is uh, Susan said I, mean, I published my first book at age 70. So so you they still Still time. <laughs> A question, yep. something in the back? Ed, I, I wanted to thank you for saying that you came to my birthday, my 70th birthday party. You came to our 70th birthday party. And you said to me, I said, you know, I'm beginning to write poetry. I said, it's a good time to start. That's when I start. <laughs> and I've been writing ever since. Thank you very much. <laughs> to bring us to feel 
what is going on in the world around us. And I so appreciate Adam for writing that way, but living that way, creating community, bringing people in, nurturing people, not only writers, but people, and he certainly did that for me as a mentor. Thank you. I just wanted to say that your poem about refugees really touched my heart and that uh, as an artist, what I've had an ongoing theme over the last 20 years of refugees and of prints and paintings. And it's in their name, folks. I just want to do a little shout out to Elise. Um, yeah. for recognizing the brilliance and helping bring it out to the world. <laughs> Anyone else? One good one. Being a Saturday morning and coming here passing several um, garage sales. <laughs> <laughs> and a person claiming to divest themselves of all the clutter in our house. I'm sure glad I made the, the choice that I did. <laughs> Instead of adding, she could have added clutter to her life. Instead, she came here for <laughs> <laughs> real you know, value. And, uh, to hear about um, clutter. <laughs> and it might only be that I wasn't driving. <laughs> uh, would you like to have this finish with anything in particular? Or? Oh, I, I, I didn't think of a proper exit line. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. Keep going. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank last words. I haven't thought of a proper exit line. <laughs> Well, I, on behalf of Adam David Miller and the library and myself, thank you for coming. Uh, and uh, one more round of applause for Adam. series out of the Claremont branch. My name is Glenn Ingersoll. Uh, I do a monthly poetry circle on the second Thursday in the evening. We just sit around a table and very informally read poems to each other. Uh, three times a year I do this clearly meant where we have the guest poet come and uh, read their work and then discuss it afterwards. So our next one will be uh, what is this? Is June next will be in October? So date to be announced, poet to be announced. Uh, but I will also create a chat book for that poet that will be available all the branches of the library. Anyone who didn't get Adam's book uh, can go in the back and print some more now. So let me know how many I should print. Okay, so it looks like about fifteen. So. Is your recording time? Uh, that will be worked out. We'll see. Okay, thank you for so, coming. Can you remind them about the books? Yes, there are books for sale over here on the table. Uh, we don't have the, we at the library don't handle any of the sales. That's up to the poet, but I hope you do buy them. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.